When I first heard about the oil spill, my initial thought was I wish they would do something about this. And then I had an epiphany like, who are they? And if they can do something about this, I can do something about this. So I started watching the news more closely and as the days went on and on, I really started getting more concerned because this is like our future. We depend on these waters. Like what will be the outcome for us, for our children, our grandchildren? So I decided to come down to New Orleans and visit Grand Isle, Louisiana, um, Alabama, and Biloxi, Mississippi, just to document, to speak to the people. Because while watching the news, the BP execs and the senators were really using big words and fancy talk. And I felt that was just a way to disguise what was really going on so that people could not understand how devastating this really was going to be. No fancy talk, no big words, just, just being real. What industry most fuels your economy here? The industry that most fuels its tourism. It's usually at this time of year we have a lot of tourists. Alabama has a huge um, tourism industry. Well, it's going to affect the, the tourism part of it. Well, with the tourist industry, the seafood, the restaurants, have been closed. We have a huge fishing industry, both recreational and commercial. Um, we are farmers. We have a big agricultural industry. And they also go down to Grand Isle, they go down to Venice, they go down to uh, southeast Louisiana. But they, they, their first stop normally is in New Orleans. So if they're not going down to do any of the charter fishing or any of the the, the stuff they have in southeast Louisiana, mm -hmm. then they're not, they're not going to stop here. All of these things um, are tied together. They're all connected. And the one driving force behind all of them is that they all depend for their success on the quality of our natural resources. So something as big um, as this oil spill really has the potential to send out ripples um, through our entire state's economy. Do you mind telling us a little bit about your organization? Yeah, the Alabama Coastal Foundation um, was founded in 1993, so we've been around for about 17 years now. We're primarily an environmental education and habitat restoration organization. Your name? Herbert Gia. Herbert Gia, and your location? Grand Isle. I'm Connie Rocco, I'm the president of the Harrison County Board of Supervisors, and we're here in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, Voodoo Barbecue and Grill and we're located at 1501 St. Charles Avenue. In, in New Orleans? In New Orleans, New Orleans, okay. Louisiana. And how many years have you been in business? Uh, they opened up in 2002. 2002? How long have you been living here? Off and on for 20 years. I've lived in Mobile now for about eight and a half years. I have lived here for uh, about, since I was 18, I would say about 35, almost 40 years. How was your business affected by Katrina? Well, I think um, the South Alabama community, particularly areas like Viola Battery and Coden, um, were really hit incredibly hard. Um, and they didn't receive um, as much press as some other areas. I think we all suffered on the Gulf Coast. They in particular did. Uh, I've been working here two years. Two years? I used to work at another restaurant before Katrina, but Katrina took that job from me too. Uh, this whole building was affected. This whole building was underwater. Underwater? Yeah. And so, like, how did like how did you all go about revamping? Just coming and cleaning up, and just trying to get the doors back open. How long did it take you? A uh, couple months. Couple months. Yeah. Did a lot of people lose their jobs. Oh yeah, a lot of people lost their jobs. So. It's like a second catastrophe to a place that's already been lost. It's one of those things where uh, it's a disaster that really uproots a lot of people and it really disrupts the economy. But in some ways, um, it forces people to move towards a challenge and to face a challenge and to come together as a community. So how has your business been affected? Well, um, it's been incredibly tiring. <laughs> right now, at this time last year, we were busy, never had time to come out here and talk. Okay. Because it was constant business over and over, you know, all day. Well, I was more concerned for Louisiana at first. I mean, we're really not affected by seafood since we only have, we just have one menu on our item. Item on our menu mm -hmm. that's uh, Shrimp. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks have called on us and are looking to us to be leaders in the community to help address their concerns with BP and the Coast Guard and also to convey um, information back to the community about what's going on and, and what they can do. Um, so it's been an incredible strain for my organization simply because we're only three people. I mean, BP is helping us. You know, somewhat, you know, they're giving us a check and everything and a check to help her keep going. But it's, it's, she's still losing. It's not, it's not making it what we used to make. Are you familiar with the dispersant that they're using, the core exit? 
I really don't know how I, I work here and it's like I don't know much about the oil spill, you know. Okay. And I don't want to say something and get my you know, hurt somebody feel. I have heard about it, I've asked for MSDS sheets on it and feel that it is not something that we should be using. I feel that it is not only the chemicals in it are dangerous, but also the fact that you want to sink oil and not know which water column it will end up in and where it will end up and what time it will end up is a very bad practice and I know they don't use that in England or in Europe. They only use it over here. So if we could actually take a, uh, let the oil come to the surface and skim it off the top and separate it from the water, that's the, that's the way we should go. I think the question of dispersants is going to be one that's going to haunt us for a long time. Um, we've used dispersants in other oil spills, um, but we've never used such an incredible volume for such a long period of time. Um, so, you know, I know that the EPA is conducting toxicity testing and they're, you know, determining whether or not it's safe to continue using these dispersants or whether we should switch to others, but I would prefer that the Gulf of Mexico not be used as a test lab. So we're looking forward that hopefully they can find a resolution to it. Who is they? Um, BP and um, Rich White and whoever comes together, all the great minds that come together to find a way to stop that earth. When folks started realizing that the oil was going to impact our shores, they started calling our office, among others, in um, Alabama and across the Gulf Coast, wanting to get involved in some way, wanting access to information, wanting to know what was going on, and most importantly, wanting to know how they could help and how they can get involved. Okay, so have people been coming in asking questions? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah they, especially when it comes to if they ask trip, they ask where to come from, stuff like that. So we started collecting all of these, uh, all this contact information, thinking, we need to find a way to get these people engaged. Um, and so that's what we've been working on. I'm sorry, it's probably one of them now. Uh, <laughs> we've been able to implement one program right now on, on the ground, which is called our Volunteer Field Observer Program. We've got about 270 people trained. They go out on the water at least twice a week, and they assess a mile-long segment of shoreline. And they look for the quality of the shoreline, and they document the quality of our shoreline. Yes, yeah, so I've contributed with what I could, which is prayer. With prayer? Prayer and positive thinking that the great minds that come together will be able to resolve this issue. If you could say something to BP, what would you say? Clean it up. You know, really, that's about it. You know what? I, my my dog. I have a dog that's been with us for five years, and she loved to go walk on the beach. She, I mean, she run on the beach. She run in the wind. Now she, I can't even go walk on the beach. I mean, so it's a loss to her, and it's, it's a dog, but it's, that's ours. That's like my, my little girl, you know? I've always had her for five years, and she's losing, so it, it only affects us. It affects our pets and everybody, everything and everybody around us, you know? I would say trust the public. Trust the public to come together as a community. Trust the public with information and with data share with us what's going on, where your concerns are, and let us help find a solution to this problem. The American people have an incredible ability to face a challenge head on and to deal with it and to find a solution and to come out stronger on the other side. And I really hope that in this instance, we'll have that opportunity to prove that that's true. It's a long, it seems it, like a long time because we live in here and we're going through it. People that's not, not, don't live down here, it's got to be different than we're actually down here having a deal yeah. with No, I Our understand. Our life is changing. Everything is changing down here. I understand. 70, 70 days. 78 days is a long time for this oil to yeah. still be going. And it really does affect everyone.